Hey, what's up everybody? Rob Marzullo here, Ram Studio Comics. And I got another video for you today is on tips and tricks. Um, created this playlist to kind of do some quick tips and tricks when it comes to drawing comics and illustrating and doing whatever. So I um, haven't been able to add to this playlist in a while, but I uh, got another idea for one. So let's go and get started. Um, what this one's about is creating better thumbnails. So as you know, a uh, thumbnail is like, say you got a scene, you know, you've got two characters that are going to, you know, argue or battle it out. And, you know, you just kind of really rough in, you know, your your characters. You know, what they're doing, expressions, emotions, what they're holding, you know, whatever. That's your thumbnails, right? Okay, so we all know that. And these are some pretty crude <laughs> thumbnails, but that's kind of the point. Uh, so that, that's kind of a beginning of a... You know thumbnail and you can pull from reference and get hand expressions facial expressions clothing blah 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 uh, and that's how you'd rough it out now one of the the things that I recommend doing is unlike there where I was really I've got this screen obviously very large and it almost uh, encourages me to over detail in the thumbnail stage uh, I recommend doing something like this if you're working digitally uh, you know, in Sketchbook, you can hold the space bar here and drag out and make your your uh, screen very small like this. And you could do this in any digital application, obviously. And if you're working traditionally, you would just sketch out a smaller box on your paper. Uh, one of the things we do in storyboarding is you can take a piece of paper and fold it uh, four times, I believe, and it gives you eight frames or something like that. I, I'm not doing it right now, but... Um, and it segments the paper into this nice little widescreen format and if you fold it properly and you know whatever you can just draw them out but it's a little trick there for that as well but by doing this by making it smaller whether you're working traditionally or digitally uh, it forces you to only focus on your composition and, and putting down quick representation so say we've got we'll say a character jumping off a building uh, you're looking slightly up uh, you know from from below or something okay so we'll put like uh, the edge of a building like this and just real basic no details nothing extravagant at this stage and then the characters jumping off building and we'll do you know a typical you know arms out kind of pose and the main thing is like I said that because I'm working so small I mean Right now, I don't know what size you're watching the video at, but this size would be, to me, uh, it looks like about three inches wide by an inch and a half on my screen. So it allows me to just focus on the fundamentals of the, uh, the scene at this stage, which is all you should be wor worried about with your thumbnails. And the, the reason being, if you get too far off into your, your detail work at this stage, You'll stifle your creative process in a, in a way. You'll zoom up to the face and want to do all these cool shadows and details and cross hatching or whatever. And that's not what this stage is about. This stage is about just getting the concept down really quickly, really loose, really fluid. And then all that cool creative uh, or all that cool detail work comes later. Uh, if you apply detail work over a weak foundation anyways, then... then the picture is not going to do well regardless so so like that's uh, how I would thumbnail it really fast from a distance and now I can zoom in and go all right that's a pretty ugly sketch but <laughs> I could just tone the layer down or soft erase it and start building over top and start refining and then I can get in there and add a little bit more of my structure and my or uh, my anatomy or whatever and and really start to uh, refine the pose and you know, obviously I got some proportion issues still, but all that is fine because I really just want to get the overall concept down. And I'll do one more and show you that this does lend itself really well. It, it, the reason why I wanted to make sure to address this, it lends itself really well to t a couple things. One, I think that you come out with better overall um, concepts afterwards. Uh, the other thing is I think your speed is bumped up by this. Um, and I'll show you why. Like, if I if I zoomed in really far and tried sketching something out like this, I would really get lost in my time as far as trying to work, work it out. But 
from the distance of working really far back like this, I can't really do that. I, there's only so much information I can put down, so it really forces me to be quicker about it. Um, so let's try another one where, I don't know, a character flying um, towards camera a bit, you know, which can always be a tricky pose to work on. So flying at camera, again, it forces me to only see basic details because I can't, I can barely see what I'm doing anyways, but, <laughs> you know, but that's good. I, I just want to get the overall feeling down and the basic uh, expression. So he's flying at camera. We see a little bit of the legs. I don't know. Once I zoom in, I won't, might want to change how much of the legs we see. Maybe tuck it back. Uh, the other thing is it's always good to draw some basic perspective lines in whatever shot you're doing. It'll help everything else. So, you know, so if you want them to be over city, then your horizon line's very low. And you're going to see tops of buildings like this. And I'll be doing a uh, full city rendering pretty soon here. I've been actually meaning to uh, get that video out. So that'll be an up and coming video, just so you know. And remember these perspective lines also work with the, with the character. So as I get in here a little bit closer, and do some clouds back here, and just real, real rough. That's, you know, that's enough information. Whoa, sorry. Stupid rotate button. Okay, so now that's enough, and that's pretty bad, but that's enough information to get me started. And I would generally rough out, I don't know, 20 of these, 30, whatever, 10, 10 to 20, I guess, before I really set onto a design that I like. You know, sometimes you get lucky, it's the first or second one, but more often than not, you got to kind of warm up to it. So now with that, I could tone it down again, and I get in there, refine it, I can look at my perspective lines and go, Ah, you know what? His legs wouldn't, they're almost pointing downward like this, so they're not fitting to the perspective. But I would just use my basic rough, and I would just start going in there with what I know about uh, anatomy or whatever. And then I would just start trying to, uh, you know, refine that a bit and get some of the musculature in there or whatever. And just keep going, you know, and, and stage after stage, I would get it to a more refined piece of art. And then if I have a tough uh, perspective, like these hands, then I might take some shots of my own hands pointing at camera. I might look in the mirror uh, as I'm pointing my hands this way and then study them for a bit and then draw them. So that's how you work through this. But it's important that you first get the concept down. And, and I guess there's one more point I want to make to this. By forcing yourself to get the concept down and then making it work, you're you're realizing what it takes a little bit more to be a professional artist because you don't get to draw what you want uh, when you're working on deadlines and books and things like that. Uh, sometimes you do. You know, if you're working on your own independent book, you're going to be able to do that a lot more, have a lot more freedom. But you can't let the what you want to draw dictate the story either. So you have to basically force yourself to get a certain concept down, whether it be a really rough thumbnail, and then make it work. Um, so that teaches you how to be a professional because that's the way it works. So, um, another little thing I could do to like get this perspective, right? Control X, control V, put those back in, grab the distort tool. So at any rate, that's, uh, that's today's little quick tip and trick. Um, obviously it's not a very elaborate, uh, video and this is pretty rough and crude, but hopefully that's helped you out and taught you a little something and gave you an idea of how you could work through something like this. If this video or the other ones like it have been helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. That way I can keep bringing you new content each week. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for watching. We will talk to you soon.